Hello, hello, hello. Come on in and spend some moments with Myra. Yes. So tonight I'm gonna try and read a chapter from this book. It's called Make Your Bed. So on the back, it makes sense. If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another task and another. By the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that little things in life matters. If you can't do the little things right, you will never do the big things right. That's on the back. So let me get started. How y'all feeling? Relax. Let me try to read this. And I say, let me try to read this because my eyes are bad, y'all. Sometimes the words run into each other when I be reading. It happens, but I'm still determined to try and read. So this first chapter is called Preface. Bear with me. On May 17, 2014, I was honored to give the commencement speech for the graduation class from the University of Texas at Austin. Even though the university was my alma mater, I was concerned that a military officer who career, sorry, who career had been defined by war might not find a welcoming audience among college students. But to my great surprise, the graduation class embraced the speech. The 10 lessons I learned from the Navy, the Navy SEAL training, which were the basics for the remarks. It seemed to have a universal appeal they were simple lessons that deals with overcoming the trials of SEAL training. But the 10 lessons were equally important in dealing with the challenges of life, no matter who you are. Over the past three years, I have been stopped on the street by great folks telling me their own stories, how they didn't back down from the sharks, how they didn't ring the bells, or how making their bed every morning helped them through rough times. They all wanted to know more about how the 10 lessons shaped my life and about the people who inspired me during my career. This small book is an attempt to do so. Each chapter gives a little more context to the individual lesson and also adds a short story about some of the people who inspired me. With their discipline, their perseverance, their honor, and their courage. I hope you enjoy this book. Make your bed.
the barracks at basic sale training is a non-descript three-story building located at Coronado, Coronado, California, just 100 yards from the Pacific Ocean. There is no air conditioning in this building at night. <laughs> With the windows open, you can hear the tides roll in and the surf pounding against the sand. Rooms in the barrack are spartan. In the officer's room, where I birth, were three other classmates. There were four beds, a closet to hang, your uniform, and nothing else. Those mornings that I had stayed in the barracks, I would roll out of my Navy rack and immediately begin the process of making my bed. It was the first task of the day. A day I knew would be filled with uniform inspections, long swims, longer run, obstacle courses, and constant harassment from the SEAL instructor. Attention, shouted the class leader. Lieutenant Junior Grade Daniel Stewart, as the instructor entered the room, standing at the foot of the bed, I slapped my heels together and stood up straight as the chief petty officer approached my position. The instructor stern and expressionless began to inspect by checking the starch in the green uniform hat to ensure the eight-sided cover was crisp and correctly blocked. Moving from the top to the bottom, his eyes looked over every inch of my uniform. Where the creases in my blouse and trousers aligned, was the braids on my belt shine to a mirror-like radiance? Were my boots polished bright enough so he could see his finger in the reflection? Satisfied that I met the high standard expected of the SEAL training, he moved to inspect the bed. The bed was as simple as the room, nothing but a steel frame and a single mattress. A bottom sheet covered the mattress and over that was a top sheet. A gray wool blanket tucked tightly under the mattress, providing warmth from the cool San Diego evenings. A second blanket was expertly folded into a rectangle at the foot of the bed. A single pillow was made by the lighthouse for the blind, was centered at the top of the bed and intersected at a 99 degree angle with the blanket at the bottom. This was the standard. Any deviation from this exacting requirement <laughs> would be cause for me to hit the surf and then roll around on the beach until I was covered head to toe with wet sand, referred to as sugar cookie. Standing motionlessly, I could see the instructor out the corner of my eye. He worriedly looked over my bed, bending over, he checked the hospital corners and then surveyed the blankets and the pillows to ensure they were correctly aligned. Then reaching into his pocket, he pulled out a quarter and flipped it into the air several times to ensure I knew the final test of the bed was coming. With one final flip, the quarter flew high into the air and came down on the mattress with a light bounce. It jumped several inches off the bed, high enough for the instructor to catch it in his eye.
swinging around to his face. The instructor looked at me in the eye and nodded. He never said a word. Making my bed correctly was not going to be an opportunity for praise. It was expected of me. It was my first task of the day, and doing it right was important. It demonstrated my discipline. It showed my attention to detail. And at the end of the day, it would be a reminder that I had done something well. Sometimes to be proud of is something to be proud of, no matter how small the task. Throughout my life in the Navy, making my bed was one of the constants that I could count on every day. As a young SEAL ensign aboard the USS Grayback, a special operations submarine, I was birthed in sick bay where the beds were stacked for high. The salty old doctor who ran the sick bay insisted that I make my rack every morning. He often remarked that if the beds were not made and the room was not clean, how could the sailor expect the best medical care? As I later found out, this sentiment of cleanliness and the order applied to every aspect of military life. Thirty years later, the Twin Tower came down in the New York City. The Pentagon was struck and the brave American died in the airplane over Pennsylvania. At the time of the attack, I was recuperating at my home from a serious parachute accident. A hospital bed had been wheeled into my government quarter and I spent most of the day lying on my back trying to recover. I wanted out of that bed more than anything else. Like every seal, I longed to be with my fellow warriors in the fight. When I was finally well enough to lift myself unaid from the bed, the first thing I did was pull my sheet up tight, adjust my pillow, and made sure the hospital bed looked presentable. To all those who entered my home, it was my way of showing that I had conquered the injury and was moving forward with my life. By October 2003, I was in Iraq at a makeshift headquarters on the Baghdad airfield. For the first few months, we slept on army cots. Nevertheless, I would wake up every morning, roll up my sleeping bag, place a pillow at the head of the cot, and get ready for the day. In December 2003, U.S. forces captured Saddam Hussein. He was held in confinement during which time we kept him in a small room. He also slept on an army cot, but with the luxury of sheets and a blanket. Once a day I would, sit, I would visit Saddam who ensured my soldiers were properly caring for him. I noticed with some sense of amusement that Saddam did not make his bed. The covers were always crumbled at the foot of his cot, and he rarely seemed inclined to straighten them. During the ensuing 10 years, I had the honor of working with some of the finest men and women this nation has ever produced, from generals to privates, from admirals, to seamen, recruits, from ambassadors, to clerks, typists. The Americans who deployed overseas in support of the war effort came willingly, sacrificing much to protect this great nation. They all understood that life is hard and that 
Sometimes there is little you can do to affect the outcome of your day. In battle, soldiers die, family grieve. Your days are long and filled with anxious moments. Your search for something that can give you silence, that can motivate you to begin your day, that can be a sense of pride in an oftentimes ugly world. But it is not just combat. It is daily life that needs this same sense of structure. Nothing can replace the strength and comfort of one's faith. But sometimes the act of making your bed can give you the lift you need to start your day and provide you the satisfaction to end it right. If you want to change your life and maybe the world, start off by making your bed. That's the end of chapter one. Chapter 2 coming soon. Moments with Myra.